Indonesia is building a brand new capital city in the middle of the jungle. Here's what you need to know. Indonesia's parliament passed a bill on Tuesday, January 18th, to relocate the country's capital from the sinking city of Jakarta, 2,000 kilometers east to the island of Borneo. The city will be named Nusantara, the Javanese word for archipelago. The site was chosen because it reflects Indonesia's geography and was iconic internationally, the National Development Planning Minister was quoted by The Guardian as saying. Nusantara will cover about 56,180 hectares in East Kalimantan Province, a total of 256,142 hectares, almost all of it currently rainforest, has been set aside for the initial project and future expansion. Statements from officials and renderings depict Nusantara as a utopian design and an eco-friendly smart city, but few details have been confirmed. Construction was planned to begin in 2020, but was delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Indonesia's Minister of Finance said in a press conference on Tuesday, there will be five stages of development for the new city, starting in 2022 and running until 2045. Budget details have not yet been released in a presidential decree, but previous reports have pegged the project's costs at 32 billion U.S. dollars, according to CNN. President Joko Widodo first announced plans to relocate the capital in April of 2019. The government hopes relocating the capital will reduce the burden on the Jakarta metropolitan area, an overpopulated urban region of 30 million people. Jakarta is one of the fastest sinking cities on Earth, according to the World Economic Forum, and suffers from severe traffic congestion, air pollution, and flooding. Experts expect nearly all of North Jakarta to be submerged by 2050. The government also hopes the relocation will help redistribute wealth to other regions in Indonesia. Relocation plans have faced criticism from environmentalists who say it would threaten ecosystems in Borneo's rainforests, which are home to orangutans, sun bears, and long-nosed monkeys. Japan could soon be getting a futuristic city courtesy of Toyota. Danish architectural firm Björk Engels Group has been commissioned by Toyota to build a prototype futuristic city called Woven City at the base of Mount Fuji in Japan. In a press release, Toyota said the city will be built on a 175-acre site and will be used to test futuristic vehicles, AI robots, and smart homes in a real-world environment. Designs of the city were unveiled at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas on January 7th. Woven City will include buildings made mostly of wood for sustainability, with its rooftops covered with solar panels to produce energy. In addition to solar power, the city will also be powered by hydrogen fuel cells. Homes will be equipped with AI robots and sensors to take care of residents' basic needs and to monitor their health. The futuristic city's main roads will only allow fully autonomous vehicles, such as the Toyota e pallets to operate. There will be separate roads for pedestrians and those using personal mobility vehicles, such as bicycles. A central plaza, neighborhood parks, and a large central park will be included for social gatherings among residents. Toyota explained in its press release that it plans to populate the city with company employees, families, retired couples, visiting scientists, and others. The city will initially be populated with 2,000 people. The company plans to break ground by early 2021. Italian architectural firm Stefano Boeri Architetti has unveiled design plans for a smart forest city in Cancun. According to the architectural firm's website, the site would consist of 400 hectares of green space and feature public parks and private gardens. The smart forest city would contain green roofs and more than 200,000 trees that would be able to absorb approximately 116,000 tons of carbon dioxide. The company explained that the area would be surrounded by a ring of solar panels and agricultural fields to provide renewable energy and food for the city. The development's agricultural fields would be irrigated by a water channel connected to an underwater maritime pipe. The site would use electric and semi-automatic vehicles instead of traditional vehicles for both residents and visitors. Visitors to the forest city would be required to leave their traditional vehicles at the city's outer edge. According to Stefano Boeri Architetti, the development would house an advanced research center for international organizations and companies that are interested in our planet's sustainability issues. The proposed plan would reforest the area and build a smart forest city instead of a shopping district. The UN recently signed a deal with the Korean port city of Busan to build the world's first floating city on Busan's coastline. Here are the details. Business Insider reports that a historic deal was signed on Thursday, November 18th to build the world's first-ever floating city on the coast of South Korea. The South Korean city of Busan agreed to host such a floating city with the backing of the UN Human Settlement Program and Oceanics, the company that designed the floating city. Like many coastal cities, Busan is threatened by rising sea levels, and the floating city is designed to help such cities expand onto the sea. 
The city will be based on a collection of hexagonal platforms that float on the water. These platforms will be strengthened by a limestone coating that's more than twice as hard as concrete while also being buoyant. The city is designed to survive Category 5 hurricanes. It would also be flood-proof as it is designed to rise with the sea. The floating city would produce its own food, energy, and fresh water. Cages underneath the platforms could be used to house scallops, kelp, or other forms of seafood, while aquaponic systems could use waste from fish to fertilize plants. The next step will be for Oceanics and the UN to work with Busan's officials to fine-tune the final design of the floating habitat. Oceanics says the whole process would take a total of three years, so it expects to see the prototype in the water by 2025. Walmart billionaire Mark Lohr has launched a jaw-dropping project to build a $400 billion utopian city in the middle of the American desert. Here are the details. CNN reports that recently retired Walmart billionaire Mark Lohr announced plans to build a brand new super city in the middle of the American desert for $400 billion. Lohr said the plan is to construct a utopian city that will be very clean and green, built around the dream of social equality. Famous architect house Bjarke Engels Group has been hired to design the city, which Laura has named Talasa. Renderings of the plan show nature-friendly architecture covered in foliage and people playing in large parks that crisscross the city. The plans also show many green technologies built into the city. Lohr says his team will be meeting very soon with state officials in one of the U.S.'s less populated regions with the aim of receiving the city's first residents by 2030. The project's first phase aims to build enough infrastructure for 50,000 people on 1,500 acres for an estimated cost of $25 billion. The whole city would eventually house 5 million people within 40 years. Lohr said the aim is to create a more equitable city from the ground up, where all citizens would participate in the decision-making and budgeting process. His plan to build a revolutionary new city in the desert echoes that of Mike Reynolds, who after many years of struggling with local authorities, was granted the right to build nature-friendly buildings called Earth Ships in an area of New Mexico. Over the years, Reynolds' community has built dozens of Earth Ships, which require no external water, electricity, or sewage connections, and thus save the inhabitants thousands of dollars in municipal fees per year. Saudi Arabia Mostly famous for fueling the world's disastrous fossil fuel habit and an appalling human rights record, says it is creating a futuristic green megacity. Here are the details. Saudi Arabia has begun construction on an eco-friendly, linear city, according to a Bloomberg interview with its chief executive, Nad Mial Nasser, who says it could be inhabitable by 2024. The idea is that the city, called The Line, will be the first part of a wider region-building project known as NEOM and will operate without cars, streets, and carbon emissions. Designs available on the city's website show three layers, a surface layer for pedestrians and two subterranean layers for transport and infrastructure. According to Dazeen, the city will consist of city modules linking the Red Sea coast with the northwest of Saudi Arabia to create the 100-mile or 170-kilometer-long line. AI-driven transportation will be facilitated by massive data harnessing, and the city will ultimately be home to 1 million people, all living within a 5-minute walk of essential daily services such as schools, medical clinics, leisure facilities, and green spaces all powered by 100% clean energy. The broader project, which this is a part of, NEOM, was announced in 2017 and stretches into Jordan and Egypt, while all being completely powered by renewable energy. It will ultimately measure 10,230 square miles, and the 500 billion US dollars of funding for it will come from the Saudi government, its sovereign wealth fund and investors. One of the main goals behind NEOM is to diversify Saudi Arabia's economy in an attempt to move it beyond oil, with a megacity focusing on industries such as energy and water, biotechnology, food, advanced manufacturing and entertainment, according to Business Insider. However, plans to build five palaces in its massive business zone, plus hints at there being less conservative laws within the region, perhaps identify the class makeup of the project's target citizens. And while attempts to move away from fossil fuels should be welcomed, the accusation is that this whole project is a kind of slick greenwashing PR campaign designed to wipe away human rights abuses reported by Amnesty International, such as the use of torture and punishment, massive restrictions on political protest, and huge discrimination against and ill treatment of women and migrant workers. Alternative living arrangements may well be required in order to counter and mitigate climate change then, but we should probably remind ourselves that other futuristic cities are available. For example, in 2019, Italian architectural firm Stefano Boeri Architetti unveiled design plans for a smart forest city in Cancun. 
According to the firm's website, the site would consist of 400 hectares of green space and feature public parks and private gardens. The smart forest city could contain green roofs and more than 200,000 trees that would be able to absorb approximately 116,000 tons of carbon dioxide. The company explained that the area would be surrounded by a ring of solar panels and agricultural fields to provide renewable energy and food for the city. The development's agricultural fields would be irrigated by a water channel connected to an underwater maritime pipe, and the site would use electric and semi-automatic vehicles instead of traditional vehicles for both residents and visitors. Visitors to the forest city would be required to leave their traditional vehicles at the city's outer edge. For more news animations and explainers. Hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.